This is the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast, the only podcast devoted to making soul music relevant again. Let's get started with your host, Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special guest today is a talented singer-songwriter out of New York. Goes by the name of Josh X. Josh, how you doing? Good, good. How much to sell? Good, good, man. Welcome to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. Thank you for having me. No problem. Um, you got a new single out that I got. Yes. I'm really excited about Crayo Love. Real Love. Okay. I just dropped it on Friday of the day after Thanksgiving. Okay. Um, it's featured Michael and uh, Saskia, and we're going viral. Strictly for, you know, anybody that got that Caribbean flavor, that, uh, you know, that's my heritage, being from my parents are from Haiti. Okay. I wanted to really put something to the culture, because growing up, that was my sound of music, listening to my mom play those dope, you know, compa songs. So Crayola Love is my tribute okay. for the culture. Fantastic. I love it. I thought it was a great song. And Thank you. We got another song, your previous song, I think it's called I Miss You. Yes. And we, I miss feature you. That, we feature that on our new music section on our website. Oh, dope. So, so That's we, what's up. Okay, okay, okay. So you're holding me down. That's what I like. That's yeah, I what I like. What, Thank I you. I do what I can do. Thank you. All right. Um, let's get into uh, a little bit of your background, though, because you seem like a, uh, uh, when I read your profile, um, kind of like a, a child prodigy. Um, you went to the um, prestigious uh, Juilliard School mm-hmm. in New York for the performing arts. I assume that's what it's called, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so was music always just in your blood or? Well, my mom, um, being from Haiti, she was like, look, you know, your father, unfortunately, you know what I mean? I always tell this story, but with time, you end up making it a funny story. Um, your father ain't got no child support coming in for you. And this piano right here is going to be the way you get to go to college. So you either A, going to play songs like this. kicked out the house. So me being six years old, I chose a smart thing. And I stayed right on this piano right here. Okay. And I played all these songs that she told me to play because she was such a lover of classical music. And of course, at six years old, you're like, this is crazy. Like, I don't want to be playing Beethoven and Bach. I want to be playing, you know, dodgeball or freeze tag. And, and she said, listen, I told you, your father ain't no money for you. So this is how you're going to get to college because I have five of you kids. And I need to make sure that you get to school and get the proper education. Okay. And, you know, being that my mom's was very strict and um, I love her very much too, as my, as my, you know, role model growing up, I stuck to it. And um, that's how I was introduced to music. But okay. unfortunately, the first classical piece that I played for a nice little beautiful girl I was feeling, she ended up running after I got off the piano because she's like, that's the corniest type of music I've ever heard in my life. So I went back to the drum board and I told my mom, wait a minute, this classical music ain't gonna get me no girls. And if I could learn some R&B music and get a degree and give you the college things that you want, would you be cool if I switched my genre and my studying from classical to jazz commercial music? And she says, as long as you get a college degree, I don't care what you do. I said, all right, that's fair. So then I got into discovering uh, R&B music, and the first R&B artist um, that I learned and discovered was Brian McKnight. Mm. That was um, the first song. From there, I said, bro, the girls was coming in, <laughs> down a dozen, sorry, ma, but things just ain't crazy. And I said, if I, if I continue to practice writing songs like this, 
because I really idolized Brian McKnight's ability to write a song. That boy could write a hell of a song. And I said, if I stick to it, I already knew the, the theory of classical music, which was, to me, harder than the, the R&B jazz music, because classical music is very hard genre to study. So I was like, that, that's easy. If I apply myself, I could go into this music game. And that's how I really became Josh Shex and got into this R&B game. Wow. Uh, did your... Uh... Did your mom play the piano at all or? A violin, violin was her choice, but she didn't have the parents to be able to afford lessons for her. So it was her big dream for her when she had kids that she would be able to afford private lessons for all of her children. And um, that's kind of her gift to us um, because she believed music was going to help us further our lives and education. She was right. You know, I was able to get a full scholarship and, you know, she was able to watch me walk down that aisle which was a very proud moment for her. Okay, well, congratulations on that. Thank you. Yeah, um, so your siblings, are they in the music business too, or just you? Yes, I have uh, siblings that are not in the level of that I'm in it. I jumped in like real mainstream, but I have my sister, who's my older sister, Nakia, who's a piano teacher. Um, she's teaching students. Um, she also went to Juilliard as well. I have my older brother, who's an MC genius, is his rap name. Shout out to my big bros. It's actually his birthday today. Oh, so, um, happy big bro. The, yeah, happy birthday, big bro. And um, he's a rapper. He's an MC. And then, you know, my, my younger brother and younger sister as well, they dabble with the music, but they all went to lessons. We all had to play the piano. It was do or die. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, sounds like quite an upbringing. Um, a, lot of, a lot of music in your household. A lot of music. Classical music, though. Classical music. Okay. Classical music. And that's what I tell everybody when I interview. I, I let them know that I wasn't really a hip hop fan because I, I couldn't listen to hip hop. I had to listen to whatever my mom put on. And that was Mozart, Chopin. And time occasionally, we got a little bit of the cultural music at the family cookouts and the barbecues. I, she let that Haitian music come through. And that's how I caught those vibes. But hip hop was the devil's music. And r &B was baby making music. And she was like, ain't none of you kids bringing no babies for me to take care of. That's a fact. You feel me? <laughs> so she's a matter of fact about that. Huh? Thanks. Okay. Um, well, cool. Um, and so I read that when you were went to college, that's when you decided that you wanted to do this full time or do it for a living, I should say. Correct. Okay. And tell us about, well, we're going to get into... Project X, um, mm -hmm. the information I got um, a couple months ago was that it was gonna be released in the fall, but now I understand it's gonna be released early 2021. Correct, because um, I'm just enjoying the success of I Miss You. Okay. And I really wanna make sure that I give that the attention. Okay. So I've been focusing on that. Okay. And that's why I dropped Cradle Love, put more content, give my fans something, but the project will come in, in the first quarter of January with dropping the X project. Okay. Um, and so Creole Lover Part 2. Mm -hmm. uh, take us through that. I saw the video. I love the video. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, well, go check out the video. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> I always have girls in my video. I know people like, yo, Josh X is loaded with women in the videos. Hey. Don't judge me. I have Haitian parents. They're very strict. So once I got out of the house, I went crazy. But uh, Creole Love is just a blend of R&B music mixed with Kung Fu music. Okay. And I wanted to give my culture with what I do commercially in America with people back home in Haiti a blend. So I found the perfect artist to feature on it, which is Michael and Saskia. Saskia is an up-and-coming female artist. She brought that French Creole vibe to the song. And then Michael's a big international compa artist. And he brought that to the vibe. And for me, I was just bringing my American swag with R&B and my culture mixed with the Haitian vibes. Cause I'm a hybrid. I was born here, but raised like my mom was like I was in Haiti. And we put that together. And that's how we came up with that song. But I'm really proud of it. Creole Love Part Two. I think I'm gonna be doing this as a series from now on, because I see how much people love when I drop music like this. So I'm gonna make Cradle Love like this big 
thing for me where every year I'll give you guys a project. So I'm gonna have Crayo One, Crayo Two, Crayo Three, Crayo Four until I feel like I can't make up any more Crayo Love. All right. <laughs> it, it definitely works. And, Thank you. Um, yeah, I don't think you have girls in your video. You have women in your video. <laughs> That's right. Those aren't girls. That's <laughs> so, right. There we go. There we go. Yeah. So I would advise everybody. I, I recommend that you go check it out. We'll continue our episode after this message. Are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. BGRC. WQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Now, back to our conversation. Um, so 2021, we're going you're gonna drop the album or the EP. Uh, the EP. X? Okay. Uh -huh. Um now Miss I Miss You is a little bit different than Creole Lover, too. Correct. So, um, take us through that one because I really that's how I really became, uh, I noticed you on that song. Okay, dope. I miss you, um, it's super, you know, for me, it's, it's one of them songs that, you know, I had held on for a while because I really, you know, wanted to drop it at a time I felt like people would be able to receive it. Um, you know, there's a lot of music out. And I felt like in this pandemic, people are starting to miss people. And I know I felt like love is very much needed right now and we need to be amongst our loved ones. So I felt like this was the perfect time. Even though my, you know, I would love to be out performing it for all my fans on stage, but I felt like it was my job to do something in 2020 and give them, give my piece of what, you know, to help people get through this. So I miss you is a special song for me because it's talking about true love and knowing what that means when you have it and then you lose it and what you'll do to get it back. And um, it's produced by Jay White. Shout out to JY, he did his thing on the production. And um, we put it out and uh, it's really doing well. I'm so happy, it's top 20 on Billboard, R&B charts. People are starting to gravitate to it even more. I just got the call that BLS is gonna start playing my song in New York, so I'm just happy. Funk Flex just dropped it yesterday on High 97. And it's just like, it's just crazy watching a song that I had for about four or five years. I was like, maybe about three and a half years. And I had it and I was just watering and watering and watering and now it's out to the world and people are gravitating to it. So it's a very humbling experience and I'm very happy to share it with everyone. Oh yeah, congratulations. Um, Thank you. I heard that, so we got to feature this on the- yeah. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, no problem. And uh, a lot of people have been commenting on it too. They like it too, so. Okay, so we getting good responses. All right, we lit. Thank you. Uh, now, um, how did you, um, how did you, cause I see on your bio that you worked with uh, Lil Wayne and mm -hmm. Rick Ross and Cardi B. How did mm -hmm. you uh, come to their attention or how did that, hmm. how did you just get discovered, so to speak? Well, I was, when I met Lil Wayne and Cardi and worked with Rick Ross and all those artists that you mentioned, I had a resume prior to, um, I was already in the industry for about seven years, um, being an artist, um, being a songwriter, being a producer. Um, I love artist development. Um, I feel like because I went to music school, I love to bring education to artists and teach them about harmonies and all of that stuff that, you know, they may have not known from just getting up and deciding you want to make music. Um, I actually went to school for this. So for me, I love to share the information. It's free game. You know, I had a free, uh, full scholarship. It's nothing for me to help people. So while I was doing that and being an artist and a songwriter, I was getting discovered by a lot of people. So my first song was featured by Jada Kiss and uh, Jada Kiss jumped on my song called Let's Ride. And that was like my first commercially success record. And then Busta Rhymes jumped on the remix and a lot of people went on from there. I was already blown away that I did songs with those two artists. I didn't think anything could get better than that. I dropped another song called First Time. And in 2010, I dropped this song. This song literally was the game changer of my life. From there is when I got to get endorsed by 
Brian McKnight, which I explained to you was my hero, and then Stevie Wonder. And then from there, I said, okay, it doesn't get bigger than that. And from there, I started doing songs with, uh, you know, Bun B, uh, Ghostface Killer, Nipsey Hussle, uh, the great, you know, um, everybody that I really looked up to was starting to call my phone. And then producers was starting to get whiff of my writing techniques, like Swiss Beats and Jerry Wonder. And I started working with those guys. And from there, those circles, getting into other circles, being an independent writer and an independent artist, it allowed me to be in the room with whoever I wanted to be with. And um, I finally got to a point where I was gonna do a situation with uh, Birdman and Slim. And shout out to Birdman and Slim. Um, definitely dope, two executives that I looked up to my whole life. And when I got a chance to be around them for a few years and get to know them, you know, right before I decided to make a deal, I met a guy named Shaft who was, got this artist in 2015 and he meets me, I'm at the radio station and he's like, bro, he hears my stuff and he's like, yo, bro, I gotta work with you. I gotta, I gotta, you know, we gotta get up. And he comes to my house the next day and he plays me a female artist and by the, her name in 2015 is Cardi B. And he goes, this is an artist I need you to work with and produce. And I said, all right. Some told me that at this point I already developed the skill. I was already working with Birdman. I was already working with Slim. I already been flown in, you know, to many cities and states to work with projects like Slim was set up studios for me. So I already had it going on. You know, I've been in every popping studio in the country. So my ear kind of knew when something was gonna bubble at this time, because I've been developing a lot of artists. And Cardi was somebody that gravitated. I felt her energy and I decided to work with her. And um, from there, things just went crazy. I ended up signing to the label that Cardi signed to. And that's how I got into that Cardi B situation because we were label mates and um, we just started working together and I would, you know, produce her and we would go viral. And, and you know, I had a, a, a great blessing to be in the studio during Bodak Yellow and um, watching everything come from there has been, you know, out of control. And my label put the record together with Rick Ross um, after you know, my song with Cardi did well on the Billboard charts. He decided to reach out to Rick Ross with my song All On Me. He loved the record here and charged me for the verse. He just jumped on it. He gave me that vibe that I, I mean, I'm so blessed to have. Cause I knew when I made that song, Rick Ross was supposed to be on it. And it, he jumped on it and we shot the video and that did well on the charts as well. So I'm just very happy and blessed that I've been at the right place at the right time. So far, it feels like I've made a good decision to go with my instincts and everything so far has been working for my benefit. So I'm very blessed because I would have never thought you would have told me 20 years ago, 10 years ago, five years ago, that I would have been waking up in front of Stevie Wonder and then Brian McKnight and then this and then that and Lil Wayne. It's just, it just happened so fast. But it all goes back to my mom telling me at six years old, this was gonna be my way into getting to where I wanted to be. So she was right, you know, this this little instrument right here changed my life. So I'm very grateful for it. Yeah, moms is always right, right? They're always right, they're <laughs> always right. Okay, um, because of um, the uh, pandemic that we're going through, mm -hmm. um, have you done the, Instagram and the uh, Facebook Live and all that stuff? Yes, um, I've done a lot of Instagram Live interviews and a lot of uh, shows on virtual shows and having to pre-record them in rooms and then virtually put them out. It's like, it's been a whole experience. Excuse me, my mom actually contracted coronavirus as well oh. um, back in March. So I had to educate myself on the, the COVID-19 situation a little bit more because she caught it and she obviously had some underlying con conditions that was making me a little worried, um, but she beat it and she's good. So this, this whole thing has been an experience during 2020, but I'm very happy to be alive for the most part. I think life is something that we've seen so many people suffer from this year. So I make no complaints because as long as I have my life, I'm blessed. Yeah, absolutely. Here, here. And um, 
yeah, congratulations to your mom for uh, thank you. That too. Uh, yeah, 2020 has been just a real brutal year. It seemed like from start to finish. Um, so hopefully 2021 will be a little bit better. I'm looking forward to it. Hopefully. Right. Trying to get over this year. Like, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's push it. Right. Um, so I, uh, 2020 is almost over with. Um, and we already know what's going on in 2021. Anything else you want to add, uh, Josh? Um, for me, 2021 is just about, you know, growing the brand. I got a cooking show I'm going to be dropping, calling. Um, I, got a, I got a virtual music school I'm going to be dropping. Um, I have a podcast that I'm going to be getting into. And um, 2020 for me is about, the you know, just extending the, the information that I've been blessed to, to get through my journey and giving it out to the people because I feel like this industry is such a tight industry. And a lot of people like to keep information to themselves. But for me, I had to literally go and knock on the door and get it. And my pops, my dad, my brothers, no one really showed me how to get in this game. I, I had to jump in this shit, excuse me. And when I jumped into it, it made me realize that, you know, I want to give back to people. So in 2021, it's all about the year of giving back and making sure we, 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 we extend the information to people. And follow me on Instagram, Josh X, and Twitter, and all social media platforms, Josh X. Okay, let me back up for one second. Did you say you were going to do a cooking show? Yeah, cooking show. And Josh, Get it on. You do it all, don't you? Yeah, man, the cooking show is coming, man. You, the, Hey, listen, you're the first person to get that. So okay. when, you, when you drop this, they're going to be like, whoa. But yeah, I'm going I'm to be announcing the, the name of the show and everything on my gram. Right now, I'm just behind the scenes building it all together, developing it. But yeah, 2021, look out for that. You know, Josh Shakes getting crazy in the kitchen and giving them that movie because, you know, every girl <laughs> love a guy that can cook. You feel me? So true. So true. Um <laughs> One more question. I know you may not be able to answer it, but I'm going to ask anyway. What type of cuisine are you going to specialize in? Or Oh, we're going to specialize in everything. So here's the deal. My family is so big internationally. We have family in Iceland, India, uh, Japan, China. So for me, it's uh, London. For me, I'm going to take my family's culture of where we are in the world, literally, and my cousins, and I'm going to bring that cuisine to the people and let them be the judge for themselves because there's so many foods that I eat that people be like, hey, what's that? What kind of ice cream is that? What kind of snacks is that? Even down to the chips, my chips are foreign. So I just want to make sure on my show, I bring all of that food knowledge and listen, I love to eat. I'm on a diet. Unfortunately, my label has won and pushed me to get a diet because they say that it's better for my health. That was a smart approach. They didn't say it was better for my career. They said my health. <laughs> so because they said my health and I want to live, I said, all right, I'll take a diet. But I'm down 130 plus pounds. Wow. I'm very blessed to say that. And um, I'm going to make this cooking show about healthy eating. So it's not going to be about getting unhealthy. It's going to be about healthy eating and the right choices. So I'm looking very forward to that. And 2021, we're going to be dropping that. Oh, well, congratulations on the weight loss, man. I think everybody. Thank you. Thank you. That. But, um, man, Thank you. Pounds is... It's a heavy deal. It's a heavy deal. It was a lot of focus. I had to make a lot of sacrifices. I had to make a lot of sacrifices. But hey, we're here. God is good. All the time. All right. Josh, I appreciate you taking the time today, sir. Thank you. I appreciate you for and, having the time to interview me as well. And I'm sorry, let's run through your social media uh, connections again. So you can follow me at Josh X on Instagram. Twitter as well, Facebook as well. And then you can go to my dot com, which is joshexantis.com. Check me out. That's spelled J-O-S-H-X-A-N-T-U-S.com. And I'm always on social media, really talking to my supporters. Like, you don't got to worry about no third party. It's really me. I love everybody that comes in. And I love to try my best to reach out to everybody that supports. So definitely holler at your boy. I'm on here. Okay. And we'll have links to all of Josh's social media uh, connections as well on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Thank Josh, you. Appreciate you, sir. Keep up the good yeah. work, man. I'm looking forward to uh, Project X next year. Appreciate that, Todd. I appreciate that. We going viral. All right. And I want to pick up some cooking tips, too. On the uh, Oh, man, you got to watch the show, show, man, because we doing it for the fellas on this show. 
Okay. This show is strictly for the fellas. We're going to stop letting that try to say fellas don't know how to chef it up. We're going to make this a point. We're going to go viral. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. All right, Ty. God bless. All right, God bless you too, brother. Take care. Take care. That's Josh X, and we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Mr. Josh X. You can find out more about Josh on his website as well as his social media sites. You can also check out the profile we did on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Spotify. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.